It's ChatGPT's first birthday, and what a year it was. Let's review. ChatGPT went live on November 30th, 2022, and by OpenAI's own admission, they didn't expect much from this experimental interface for their GPT 3.5 model. But we all know what happened next. Millions of people came to check out this thing that could converse fluently on seemingly any topic. By February, ChatGPT had been used by over 100 million people, making it perhaps the fastest growing consumer application in history. And that number only went up when they released an official iPhone app in May. This is also when people started freaking out. Countries started fast-tracking regulations they'd been working on for years. And companies had to decide whether they wanted to adopt the hot new chatbot or build their own. But then in July, OpenAI came out with GPT-4, which was even better, especially at coding. People clocked to the fact that they probably weren't going to catch up. And even if they tried, they might fall on their face, like Google did with Bard. By the summer, it seemed like ChatGPT was everywhere. But in August, a study came out that showed that only 18% of Americans had used it. That's still a lot, but it's probably less than you would have guessed. A big update in September let ChatGPT go online to check more info, which is great because until then, it had been living in 2021. It also got its own voice, and you could feed it images too. This is when it started to feel like ChatGPT was more of a platform than a product. And at OpenAI's dev day on November 6th, they were making it obvious. Primarily with GPTs, these little mini fine-tuned chat GPTs that anybody can make, and basically an app store for AI. Now the company didn't really do anything to mark this first anniversary, and that's probably because they just came off of the weirdest, wildest corporate drama we've seen in years. What does that mean for OpenAI? I don't think anybody knows that. So let's find out together in 2024. I'm Devin Coldaway with TechCrunch.